King of Beards. This is my online shop where you can find products that will help you grow a strong, healthy beard. Use my coupon code KING, you'll get 15% off on your first order. First up on the list, we have the Whoa. famous Maharshala Ali. He was born on February 16, 1974, who is an American actor and a rapper. Ali was born into a Christian family. Ali is known as an actor for his role on House of Cards as Remy Daunton, as well as Colonel Stokes in Marvel's Luke Cage and Colonel Boggs in The Hunger Games. So Maharshala's interest in acting rose after he took on the play Spunk. He went on to joining University of New York's acting program. While studying there, he ended up converting to Islam and changed his surname from Gilmore to Ali. Ali is now known as the 100 most influential people as of 2019. Next up on the list, we have Frank Ribéry. Frank Ribéry was born on April 7, 1983. He was a French professional football player and was known as one of the greatest French players of his time. In 2002, he ended up converting to Islam with the influence of his Algerian descended wife. After converting to Islam, he took on the name Bilal Yusuf Muhammad. Next up on the list, we have the legendary basketball player of all time, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. In his career, he's achieved many records from NBA All-Stars, NBA MVPs, and NBA Final MVPs. He was honored as one of the 50 greatest players of NBA history. While growing up, Abdul-Jabbar grew up in New York City as a Roman Catholic. At the age of 24, Kareem decided to convert to Islam and change his name to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Next up on the list, we have Sinead O'Connor, who is one of the greatest Irish songwriters and singer. O'Connor rose to fame in the late 1980s with her debut album, The Lion and the Cobra, and eventually achieved worldwide success in the 1990s. In her career, she's had 10 solo albums, many singles, many collaborations, and has also made songs for films. While growing up, Sinead grew up as a Roman Catholic and she's had very strong opinions and views about religion, war, child abuse, and women's rights. In 2018, she decided to accept Islam and decided to change her name to Shahada Sadaka. Up next is Malcolm X, who's one of the most prominent Muslim figures of modern history. Malcolm X was a Muslim minister and a human rights activist. Malcolm X spent his teenage years in foster homes after his dad passed away. In 1946, Malcolm X was sentenced 10 years in prison for breaking and entering. While in prison, he ended up joining the group called Nation of Islam, and over time, he became the organization's most influential leader. In the 1960s, Malcolm X grew apart from the Nation of Islam and ended up joining as a Sunni Muslim. After embracing as a Sunni Muslim, he is now known as Al-Hajj Malik Al-Shabazz. After converting to a Sunni Muslim, there started to become a lot of conflict between him and the Nation of Islam. So unfortunately, as the conflict grew between the two, in 1961, he was assassinated. Jeanette Jackson is the youngest member of the Jackson family and has been a huge cultural icon. In her amazing career, she has sold over 160 million records and has won five Grammys for her amazing hits. Jeanette Jackson and the Jackson family growing up were Jehovah's Witness. After Jeanette married the Muslim billionaire Wasim Almana, she converted to Islam in 2015. Next up, we have the other Jackson sibling, Jermaine Jackson. Just like his siblings, he's also a singer and a songwriter, and he's had many hits in his career. So in this pretty cool story, Jermaine Jackson ended up meeting his wife in 2004 in a Starbucks line. Like, like can you guys imagine? And the two got married by the end of the year in a mosque in Los Angeles. Just like the rest of the family, he was raised to follow Genova's witness. And later in 1989, he ended up converting to Islam after his trip in Bahrain. So in his trip to Bahrain, he was very impressed by the children and the way they were devoted to their religion, Islam. Next up on the list is Danny Blum, who is a German professional football player. Danny began his professional soccer career with the German association football club called SV Sandhausen. After joining the club, he won a title in 2012. In 2014, he ended up joining or transferring to another German association football club, FC Nunberg. Shortly after joining this new club, he ended up injuring his knee where he had to take six months off. During these six months, he was talking to his friends and religion was brought up and they started talking about Islam. Later on, he took the decision to convert to Islam and he described Islam as a religion of hope and strength. Danny Blum has since been a devoted follower of Islam. He's been praying five times a day. Next up on the list is Cat Stevens, who is known as one of the most influential singers and songwriters of all times. Cat achieved great success in the 1960s as a teen idol. In 1975, Cat experienced a life-changing event where he was swimming in the Pacific Ocean and was pulled in into the sea. 
While in trouble, he started praying to God and he prayed that if he was saved, he would devote his life to God. Two years later, his brother gave him a copy of the Quran and he started to embrace the Quran. After embracing the Quran, he changed his name to Yusuf Islam and he ended up shocking the world by leaving his career and his fame behind to raise a family. Next up, we have one of the greatest and one of my favorite people to ever exist of all time, Muhammad Ali, who is a professional boxer and a philanthropist. Before he changed his name to Muhammad Ali, he was known as Cassius Marcellus Clay Jr. In 1960, he became an Olympic gold medalist. And in 1964, he became the world heavyweight champion and ended up defending his title 19 times. In 1961, he ended up converting to Islam and changed his name to Muhammad Ali. In 1966, during the time of the Vietnam War, Ali refused to be drafted into the military. He was then arrested and found guilty of draft evasion and he was stripped of his boxing titles, but shortly after he was eventually released. He is widely regarded as one of the most significant sport figures as well as a Muslim figure of the 20th century. Starting at number 10, we have Amina Asilmi. Formerly a Southern Baptist preacher, she converted to Islam in the year 1977 in college while trying to convert some Muslims to Christianity. As the director of the International Union of Muslim Women, she visited campuses discussing Islam. She was made one of the 500 most influential Muslims in the world in 2009 by the Royal Islamic Strategic Studies Center in Amman, Jordan. Coming in at the number nine spot, we have Lady Evelyn Murray. She confirmed her conversion to Islam back in the year 1915. Yeah, way back in the day. And she took on the Arabic name Zainab. She remarked that she considered Islam the religion most calculated to solve the world's many perplexing problems and to bring humanity peace. Next up at number eight, we have Jamie Fletcher. Jamie Mujahid Flesher is a filmmaker and a member of the National Association of Latino Independent Producers, or the NALIP. He is the owner and CEO of the advertising agency Focus Point Studios, and he was a former Catholic Christian. He studied Christianity as well as Hinduism, and he also studied Buddhism, and one of the religions that he studied was Islam and he converted to Islam at a Muslim convention in Florida. He is a youth advocate and the founder of the Andalusia Media Arts Center. As a public speaker, he has covered topics about Latinos, youth, Islam, film, and media, and he's done this at many different institutions. Coming in at number seven, we have Shah Shahidullah Faridi. He embraced Islam after reading the Kashf al-Majub, which is the unveiling of the veiled. And this is the classical treatise of Sufism written by Ali ibn Uthman al-Hujriri. Despite being born and raised in a wealthy English family, well, he decided to leave and seek sheikhs, Sufi sheikhs. And when he found a couple of them, that's when he decided to pledge his life to following this path. Cat Stevens comes in at number six. Cat Stevens formally converted to Islam on December 23rd, 1977, and he took the name Yusuf Islam in 1978. Yusuf is an Arabic rendition of the name Joseph, and he stated that he always loved the name Joseph and was particularly drawn to the story of Joseph in the Quran. Although he discontinued his pop career, he was persuaded to perform one last time before what became a 25 year musical hiatus. In the year 1979, he auctioned off all of his guitars for charity and left his musical career to devote himself to educational and philanthropic causes in the Muslim community. Next up at number five, we have Ibn Jazla. Ibn Jazla was a Baghdad-based 11th century Arab physician who wrote an influential regimen treatise that was translated into Latin in 1280 AD by the Sicilian Jewish physician Faraj ben Salem. Ibn Jazla was born to a Christian Nestorian parents in Baghdad and he converted to Islam in 1074. He died in 1100, the year 1100, under the tutelage of Abu Ali ibn al Walid al Maghribi. Number four leads us to Rebecca Salsabil Ibrahim. Rebecca is a retired Latvian weightlifter 
two-time junior world champion and two-time European champion who competed in the 58 kilogram division until 2018 and in the 59 kilogram division starting in 2018 after the International Weightlifting Federation recognized the categories. In spring of 2020, she became engaged to the Qatari discus thrower Moaz Mohammed Ibrahim and on July 26, she announced via her Instagram account that she she had converted to Islam. Number three brings us Sinead O'Connor. Born in Ireland on August 12, 1966, Sinead O'Connor converted to Islam in the year 2018, and that's when she took on a new name. She took to Twitter to make her announcement and has made numerous posts since thanking her Muslim brothers and sisters and has even shared a video of her also, you know, reciting the Azan, which is the Muslim call to prayer. Next up at number two, Stephen J. Jackson. Stephen Jesse Jackson is an American former professional basketball player who played for 14 seasons in the NBA. On January 6, 2021, he officially converted to Islam. He also went on to say this, and I quote, Everything I have today is because I get on my knees and pray five times a day. I wouldn't be able to wake up, breathe, and provide for my child if I didn't get on my knees and worship Allah. Allah is in control and every one of us in creation is reliant on Allah in every moment. It is only when we realize this that this inner peace descends upon us and that is what Islam is all about. Salam. Peace. Concluding this episode in at the number one spot, we have Andrew Tate. His full name is Emery Andrew Tate III, and he's an American British internet personality as well as a former professional kickboxer. His African American father, Emery Tate, was a chess international master, and his mother worked as a catering assistant. And he grew up Christian, but he began to show a lot of interest in Islam over the years. Then in October of 2022, Andrew Tate, well, he announced on his Getter account that he had converted to Islam. And there's also a video of Andrew Tate praying at a mosque in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates, and that went viral. And of course, now he's become very, very public in his stance that yes, he is now Muslim. But with that said, let's jump into this episode. Starting at number 10, we have Bilal Phillips. Dr. Abu Amina Bilal Phillips is a Jamaican Canadian Islamic scholar who converted to Islam in the early 70s. Shortly after becoming a Muslim, he then began a journey to seek Islamic knowledge. That journey then took him to Saudi Arabia where he completed a bachelor's in arts in Islamic studies in Medina and also an MA in Islamic theology in Riyadh. Then he went to the University of Wales, UK where he completed a PhD in Islamic theology in the early 1990s. When you look at the consequences besides the fabrication of hadith, Number nine brings us Yusuf Estes. Sheikh Yusuf Estes is an American Muslim preacher as well as a teacher, and he had converted from Christianity to Islam in the year 1991. And this was after meeting a Muslim man when he was in Egypt. He was a Muslim chaplain for the United States Bureau of Prisons from 1994 up until the year 2000. And also he was a Muslim delegate to the United Nations World Peace Conference for Religious Leaders that was held at the UN in September 2000. Now what he does is he works to share the religion of Islam as well as he hopes to share the correct message with the youth, new Muslims as well as others in very simple English terms. He also tries to make the religion of Islam as well as the Quran as understandable as possible. All of us are susceptible to people telling us stuff from the time we're born. We don't know. I'm a little kid, I'm born and I come into the world and people start telling me stuff. Who's the person I'm gonna trust the very most? Khalid Yassin is next. Oh. Sheikh Khalid Yassin is what is known as a da'i. And this is basically somebody who speaks publicly about the Islamic faith in order to really inspire the spiritual and moral conscience of the listeners. Or also to just educate and inform people about the Islamic faith. 
He was born in Brooklyn, New York, and he learned to speak about inequality. Now, he grew up in foster homes from the age of three, along with some of his siblings up until the age of 15 years old. He describes each of these foster homes as having a different Christian denomination. So he actually covered a lot of different denominations of Christianity growing up. Prior to his conversion to Islam, he was a gang member as well, and he converted to Islam in the year 1965. God sent a prophet from among the Bani Israel. All the prophets came from a designated group of people. The scholar at number seven is Yusha Evans. Now this man, Yusha Evans, was born and raised in Greenville, South Carolina in the United States into a very conservative Christian family. Now during his early teens, he was really involved in the church and that church is called Young Life, which is a non-denominational organization centered around the youth. And he actually had intentions of becoming a preacher. But later he converted to the religion of Islam in December of 1998 and Yusha, which comes from the name Joshua, he currently travels all around the world as a lecturer as well as a caller to Islam and he also teaches workshops depending on where he is in different parts of the world. Muslims, who I thought were the worst people on earth, could have the right religion. That was just something my brain was not ready to you know, to comprehend. Hamza Youssef is at number six. Hamza Youssef was born as Mark Hansen in Washington, and he grew up as a Greek Orthodox Christian. Now, in the year 1977, after a near-death experience in a car accident and then reading the Quran for himself, he converted from Christianity to Islam. Sheikh Hamza Yusuf, he spent two decades studying with the scholars over in the Middle East, as well as different parts of Africa. And after returning to the United States, Sheikh Hamza Yusuf, he co-founded what is known as the Zaytona College. And this is America's first accredited Muslim liberal arts college. And it's based in California. All right, guys, so let's get back into this episode. At number five, we have the scholar Abdul Rahim Green. Abdul Rahim Green was born in 19... 1962 in Tanzania to a British father and a Polish mother and he grew up as a Roman Catholic. Now fast forward to the year 1987 after struggling with his Roman Catholic upbringing as well as also practicing Buddhism for a short time believe it or not Abdul Rahim Green he began his journey to Islam and he officially converted in the year 1988. Eight. He soon became a regular at the popular speaker's corner in Hyde Park over in London. And that's where he practiced Dawa, which is a call to Islam. And that was done on a regular basis. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is khatam al -nabiyin. He is the seal of the messengers. So that responsibility falls upon us. Scholar number four is oh. Hamza Andreas Sortsiz. And he's a Muslim convert of Greek descent, as well as he's the author of the Divine Reality, God God, Islam and the mirage of atheism. He's a well-known public speaker as well as an instructor and he has a master's and a postgraduate certificate in philosophy from the University of London. Hamza has studied Islamic thought and theology under qualified scholars and he's delivered various different workshops as well as different courses and an accredited diploma course on topics related to Islamic thought as well as Islamic philosophy. Almost at the end of this episode, number three brings us Suhaib Webb. Now, Suhaib Webb was born William Webb into a Christian family and his grandfather was also a Christian preacher. But as time went on before he converted to Islam and long before he was considered a Muslim cleric actually, Imam Suhaib Webb lost complete interest in any religion. He became a street gangster, specifically a member of the Bloods gang, and he also became a hip-hop DJ and a producer. But after converting to Islam, he founded SWISS, which stands for the Suhaib Webb Institute of Sacred Sciences. And this, by the way, is an Islamic educational experience that uses multiple teaching methods in a structured curriculum so that people can build their Islamic literacy. Only two more scholars to look at and number two brings us Dr. Lawrence B. Brown. Born as a Christian American up until his conversion to Islam in April of 1994, Dr. Brown was definitely somebody that anyone looking in would say like, well, yeah, he's living the stereotypical American dream. He's a graduate from two Ivy League universities and he also served as a respected ophthalmologist in the United States Air Force for eight years. Now, after a personal miracle where his daughter's life was saved, Dr. Brown 
changed his focus to religious studies and he ended up in the religion of Islam. And finally, our scholar number one in this episode is Nuha Mim Keller. He's an Islamic scholar, teacher, as well as an author. Nuha Mim Keller studied philosophy and Arabic at the University of Chicago and the University of California, Los Angeles. He'd convert to Islam from Roman Catholicism in the year 1977. Now, on top of teaching Sufism, which is like the spiritual inner dimension of Islam, he has also written several books and articles on a wide range of subjects. And probably one of the most prominent of his works to this very date is The Reliance of the Traveler. And by the way, that's an annotated English translation of the Umdat al-Salik, which is a Shafi'i legal work by Ahmad ibn Naqib al-Misri. It contains over 6,000 legal rulings as well as it was the first English translation of an Islamic legal work to be certified by the Al-Azhar University. At number 10, let's look at Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson, of course, is a boxing legend. Iron Mike Tyson, you know, that name says it all. Well, he converted to Islam in the 1990s, and he has held all three major championship belts and said he has made various religious pilgrimages, including one to the city of Mecca. Many sources have said that Tyson converted to Islam while he was imprisoned following a conviction in the year 1992. But Tyson, who served three years of the six-year sentence, said that that isn't the case. In his own words, he says, and I quote, I was Muslim before I went in to prison. My chauffeur was in there, the Nation of Islam Captain Joe. He would educate me every day, every second. From there, the celebrity at number nine is Ellen Bernstein. This American actress who was born a Christian, she converted to Islam after studying Sufism. Ellen Bernstein is also in very close contact with preachers of the Sufi sect of Islam. She was named Hadaya after converting, but is not committed to just one specific religion, although yes, she does practice Sufi Islam. Coming in at number eight, we have Jermaine Jackson, the brother of the late king of pop, Michael Jackson. He revealed that he converted to Islam from Christianity. In an interview with BBC, Jermaine, he described how he and his sister went on a tour of the Middle East and this happened back in the year 1989 and he really emphasized that he met some children who welcomed them warmly. Jermaine revealed that during his conversation with the children, they were quick to tell him that they were proud of Muslims. Now, the children's confidence, he said, really shook me from within. Then they started telling me about Islam. They were giving me information that was relevant to their age. Their tone of their voice would reveal that they were extremely proud of Islam. This is how I approached Islam. That's his own words. In at the number seven spot, let's take a look at Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. When asked about the journey of conversion to Islam, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, he said that the transition was not merely a change in a celebrity brand name, but a transformation of the heart, a transformation of the soul, and a transformation of the mind. Here's one quote from Kareem Abdul-Jabbar himself. I used to be Lou Alcindor, the pale reflection of what white America expected of me. I'm Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, the manifestation of my African history, culture, and beliefs. And when you convert to an unfamiliar or unpopular religion, it invites criticism of your intelligence, patriotism, and sanity. I should know, even though I became a Muslim more than 40 years ago, I'm still defending that choice. Buster Rhymes comes next at number six. He is famous definitely for how fast he can rap. And one of the significant years of change in his life was back in the year 1983 when his parents got divorced and he decided to change his religious beliefs. He also suffered a personal loss in the year 1992 when he lost his son. Now, these challenges haunted him, but Buster Rhymes, he has spoken publicly about his faith, explaining that Islam is what grounds him. He says, I'm too blessed to fit the mold. They said, press six to give your soul or not, and you can hold. You are never gonna explode. 
Number five leads us to Jennifer Grout. In an interview with Al Jazeera, Jennifer Grout, who is an American singer, she recalled pleasant memories of her time in Morocco, which prompted her to convert to Islam back in 2013. Jennifer Grout said that after graduating from McGill University in Canada and taking a summer trip to Morocco in 2012, there was something special about Morocco that affected her and led her to convert to Islam. Now, the singer was referring to how generous and hospitable the Moroccan people actually are. Listening to all of the mosques call to prayers at the same time also really surprised her. And she began listening to the Quran actually back in the year 2010. But according to Al Jazeera, she is now well known for her recitations of the Quran. So yeah, she started to listen to the Quran. She went on her trip. And then a year later, boom, she became Muslim. Next up, let's look at Sharmila Tagore. Sharmila Tagore, the actress who was awarded the Padma Bhushan by the government of India in the year 2013, has also converted to Islam. She fell in love with Mansoor Ali Khan Potadi. He's a late cricket player and converted to Islam before marrying him. She was born a Hindu, but after her marriage, she changed her name to Aisha Begum. And Saif Ali Khan, Saba Ali Khan, and Soha Ali Khan are the couple's three children. Number three leads us to Nicholas Anelka. Nicholas Anelka was 16 years old when he converted to Islam. He says that he was always righteous and had good values and over time he became sure that Islam was the religion for him. He had these words to say and I quote, I felt this relationship with God and that enlightened my life. I had that conviction in my heart that that was my religion. Coming in at the number two spot in this episode, Dave Chappelle. Top American comedian Dave Chappelle revealed that the moment he decided to convert to Islam was his experience at the Holy Zamzam well in Saudi Arabia. Chappelle actually stated that his journey of conversion to Islam originally started when he was 17 years old and living in Washington DC at a pizza shop with a Muslim employee. And Dave Chappelle, he had this to say. I asked him questions about his religion and he was so enthusiastic about it that it was very compelling. I liked Islam's perspective and I think these things influenced my decision that I wanted to have a meaningful life, a spiritual life. Ending this episode off at number one, the newest Muslim convert in this list is Andrew Tate. British American kickboxer and influencer Andrew Tate, who was banned on all social media platforms earlier this year, 2022, has now officially converted to Islam. The former kickboxer previously described Islam as being the last true religion on the planet and that he is now confirmed that he is Muslim himself after a video of him praying in a mosque went completely viral online. Tate is a self-proclaimed success coach and he had this to say in his own words. This is why I'm Muslim. Any Christian who believes in good and understands the true battle against evil must convert. So be patient. Indeed, the promise of Allah is true. And he cited that from the Quran, Surah 30, verses 60. At number 10, we have Janet Jackson. Janet Jackson, of course, is the sister of the legendary singer Michael Jackson and a renowned actress and singer herself. She converted to Islam back in the year 2013 in order to marry her Muslim fiancé, Wissam al-Mana. Janet Jackson left the entertainment industry after marrying the Qatar-based billionaire entrepreneur, claiming that she was tired of the antagonistic industry and needed some privacy from the snooping paparazzi. She is, however, planning a comeback, apparently, with a new album under her own record label. Number nine, we have Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Ferdinand Louis Alcindor Jr. changed his name to Abdul-Jabbar after converting to Islam. 
Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, he rose to prominence as a basketball player while growing up in New York City. He dominated the local high school and was later transferred to UCLA. He won the 1971 NBA title with Oscar Robertson and after winning the title, he announced the news of his conversion. While talking about the reason why he changed his name, he said this and I quote, the adoption of a new name was an extension of my rejection of everything in my life that related to my families and people's enslavement. He said this in a 2015 Al Jazeera America editorial. He then went on to say, and I quote, my ancestors were owned by Alcindor, a French planter in the West Indies. My ancestors were Yorubas from the modern day Nigeria. Keeping the name of my family slave master seemed to dishonor them in some way. His name felt like a shameful scar. From there, let's move on to Sharmila Tagore. Sharmila Tagore, a Hindu by birth, converted to Islam after falling in love with an Indian Muslim cricketer, Mansur Ali Khan Patadi. She converted to Islam in order to marry Khan back in the year 1969. While Tagore, she felt pressured to convert to Islam before marrying a Muslim, her daughter-in-law, Karina Kapoor Khan, did not feel the same way before marrying a Muslim actor, Saif Ali Khan. In at the number 7 spot, we have Dharmendra and Hima Malini. The 90s couple of Dharmendra and Hima Malini converted to Islam in the year 1979 in order to marry each other. Dharmendra was already married to Parkash Kaur when he fell in love with Hima Malini while filming Sholay. As Hindu law does not allow a man to marry two women at a time, so Dharmendra decided to change his religion to Islam so he could marry his love. Later, Dharmendra changed his name to Dilawar Khan Kiwal Krishn. Now, as they did change their religion just to get married, it is quite unsure if they ever were really practicing Muslims. Next up on the list, at number six, we have Omar Epps. Omar Epps, better known as Dr. Foreman on House, well, he is reportedly a Muslim. There are no confirmed reports on his conversion because the actor has always kept his religious views very private. But it is claimed that not only is he Muslim by faith, but his middle name is also Hashim. Up next, at number five, Snoop Dogg. Snoop Doggy Dogg. In 2009, he converted his religion to Islam and joined the Nation of Islam, the group made in 1930 with the aim to promote conditions for black Americans. While talking about his reasons for joining the group, he said, and I quote, I'm a peace advocate and I've been in the peace movement since I started making music. My whole thing isn't about trying to force my thing on you, it's just about the way I live and I live how I'm supposed to live in terms of doing what's right and representing what's right, which is why I'm here today. Funny man, Dave Chappelle is up next at number four. Dave Chappelle, of course, a United States comic genius. He is one of the world's best, if not the best stand-up comedians, but he converted to Islam back in the year 1998. His conversion to Islam was influenced by his brother who had converted to Islam under the influence of the Nation of Islam and his 10-year-old Muslim family member, Salim. Now, later on, it was reported that Dave Chappelle, he abruptly left the controversial show business. And this was when his show, The Chappelle Show, was in the middle of production because the content contradicted his Islamic beliefs. But of course, he's made a big comeback now and he, in true Dave Chappelle fashion, has started a lot of controversy in revealing some truths behind society and the media industry. Mike Tyson comes next. He is the former heavyweight world champion and he has long been regarded as one of boxing's most intimidating fighters. Even to this date, people are still afraid of Mike Tyson. Either way though, outside of the ring, Mike Tyson has frequently found himself on the wrong side of the law. Mike Tyson was convicted of sexual assault in the year 1992 and the world champion boxer was arrested and imprisoned for three years. Now while he was in prison, he reportedly underwent a personal change. Mike Tyson, according to reports, converted to Islam after finding solace in Islamic preaching and beliefs. 
There were a few people that knew about his conversion until he tweeted a photo of himself performing Umrah in front of the Holy Kaaba in Mecca in the year 2010. A.R. Rahman is at number two. The legendary Indian music producer, singer, songwriter is known for his remarkable music compositions and was born in a Hindu household. While his mother was raised in an Islamic family and was inspired by Sufism, Rahman, he grew up as a Hindu. Only after meeting Qadiri Islam, when his younger sister became gravely ill, was he then drawn to Islamic ideals and all of their values. Then he was really moved by the religion and then soon converted to it. Coming in at number one, we have Muhammad Ali. Have you ever heard the name Cassius Clay? Well, he is no other than Muhammad Ali, the legendary boxing champion and Olympic medalist. When he was born, he was baptized as a Christian and given the name Cassius Clay. However, at the age of 20 years old, the boxer met Malcolm X, who introduced him to the Nation of Islam. And Ali was inspired and soon converted to Islam under the mentorship of Malcolm X, beginning his Sufism practice in the year 2005. Muhammad Ali was outspoken and influential, and he wore his badge of being a Muslim very proudly.